Hello there, welcome. Today I have a really insane Enigma gameplay for you. It really showcases all the different facets of the deck. Now we're playing against Riptide and man this game is a grinder I'm telling you. So straight off the bat I'm drawing into, well, my Spectra Aura so I can't really complain about that. Riptide of course, as every ranger, has a bit of a struggle with action points. It gets sort of dicey for him to clear those. So now he's coming in with a 7. Uh, of course, as Enigma, you're totally happy with blocking, especially if we can like just completely block this out and then put a another Shimmers down. Uh, beware that the Dreadbore Riptide is playing means that we can't defend with directs from hand, but we can just, you know, pay for that Bloodrot Pox at the end of our turn now. Now, Enigma has naturally a bit of a problem against Riptides. See, Riptide says that uh, whenever a trap he plays, so the D-React he has, uh, triggers, then he will deal one damage to you. And if you only have one ward attack that you're attacking with, and he triggers a trap on this attack, then that will naturally kill the ward, which also eats the go again, and your turn's just done at this point. So whenever you're attacking with ward, you kind of need to make sure you have some extra wards to pick those those up to eat all that damage and uh, believe me that will become relevant this game okay so riptide just sending some vanilla damage we draw into quite a nice hand here so we don't mind just eating that and then he uses his hand now to clear one of those shimmers which i think is a good um investment now i'm playing the second tenet of cheese here because of hands like these where i'm just then able to, you know, convert my five, full five cards, though, uh, to be fair, exactly the sand we didn't need it. Uh, now the Shimmers give a plus one to the Waning Vengeance and therefore go again. And since he, of course, also a very strong card against Riptide, he plays lots of D-Reacts, so we get full use out of this here. And then we can also... um. No, okay, that's, that's exactly right. And then we can also um, kind of strip hands, strip cards from him again, and therefore keep more of our um, of about board afterwards. He's uh, just deciding to clear those spectras anyways. And now we once again have one of those go again blues in our hand, which is very nice in the levels of enlightenment. And then afterwards we can push even more damage with the miraging metamorph. As Enigma, as always, you just want to push lots of damage as fast as possible basically so that um, you get your opponent to a very low hp point and then you can just you know pressure him, him even more with auras with your ward auras he might just be forced to block and then he can't return a full card hand and might just not be able to clear your auras anymore and from that point on you just win the game up until then usually you just you know want to play as efficient as possible and against Riptide, as long as we don't need to use our auras, we are actually even happier. If we can just force some damage through with um, generic attacks, basically, that's very good. Okay, now once again, just coming in for four. We can keep our auras up if we want to. At this point, I'm not even sure if Riptide is running Merkmire, to be honest. So maybe we can just actually commit even more on that board. <coughs> Easter strike for seven. Is kind of annoying though. He keeps an arsenal, so um, just sending back the CNC is still worth it in my opinion. So we just block the full seven here. Um, let's talk about power cuts for a moment because I'm bringing this up now, <laughs> and you see the game is will uh, the game will go for quite a while um, because Riptide's main win con against lots of decks is sort of fatigue. Uh, believe it or not, and already you can see that we are 10 deck cuts down. Actually, a bit more. So, of course he's at 17, but maybe he didn't like play it perfectly up until then, and either way, he has lots more D-Reacts in his, in his uh, deck left, so he can stay at this life total for quite a while now. And we need to make sure that our deck presents um, enough damage to actually kill him. So, as long as I'm seeing Mirror Guys without having Chi, or without having a good backup 
at like direct in the arsenal i'm pitching them for now also i want to make sure i have restless coalescence left for later on because the cat is really important to push damage you either you know play astral etchings and put three counters on a spectral shield attack with the spectral shield get the coalescence in and attack with it again um you need to use it for a big turns like that with the hand we drew mm, can sort of not play very efficiently and that's what i mean with 17 hp is still more than enough because up until this point we did draw quite well and now um it's just meant to happen that we kind of slow down and riptide can uh, keep bigger hands as well so those battering bolts are coming in now uh we kind of don't want to let them hit because they will discard all of our cards that are not action cards and we have quite a lot of those so instances and reacts Mm, we can double transcend here. Still have lots of block left. Actually, at this point, I make a <laughs> another crucial mistake, but I sort of forget about the dread ball for a second here, so we can't play the sink below, actually. Which, you know, it's still fine. We can ward quite a bit of this stuff, but we'll, we, we will get hit, hit with the battering bolt and discard some of our cards. Um, but okay, life goes on. It's actually, I think, the first time I'm playing against Riptent with Enigma. So I, I might just not have that on my mind at this point. I can still come back at him with the Miraging Metamorph. He has a popper left, but that's fine. Okay, next hand, we draw another Spectra Aura. Once again, really strong against the Rangers. So we sort of forced him to skip at least half a turn. Uh, murky Water... The on hit, I am not really relevant as of yet. I don't think he f he's used any traps at all. And now we can once again push some damage with the hand we were allowed to keep here. Mm, or at least that is if if Riptide doesn't has, have too many directs. Um, if he does not, we can actually play the coalescence out afterwards now. Unfortunately, Riptide does in fact have a direct uh, a trap actually. So if this trap triggers, we'll get dealt one damage. So I decide to just flash in the cat now. Make another Spectre Shield and deflect the damage with that. That of course means... Um, that of course means that we... Don't do any damage this turn. But Well, we, we had a frailty token anyway, so now at least we... We've got sort of a board state here. Um, unfortunately, blocking with the Command and Conquer might be the correct call now. Um, another possibility... So at this point, I mean, I'm not sure if I can keep the board. So another possibility is just keeping that hand and sending something back. For now, I don't want to surrender the board. Mm, another dread boar. Okay, and then coming for six, which we can more than easily block. And now we get all these spectra sheet values of the restless coalescence here. <coughs> which um we would love to, you know, get some damage in here. But we would just take what we can. Oh, also, and earlier where the frailty trap actually didn't do the damage is because frailty trap only triggers if the attack has go again, and our attack didn't have go again anymore because there were no counters on the spectral shield. Okay, now Riptide playing a CNC. Hmm. There's a cheeky turn here where we block with the traverse. Get a chi into our hand, play out the mirror guy, and double astral etchings now. <laughs> that would be a dragon that, that's coming in for, let me see, 20 damage? 6, 12, yeah. Um, but can we can we keep the ward back up to prevent it from traps? It might just be too risky either way, because if we're being unlucky... Ah, but on the other hand, I mean, if you get the chance right. You just go for it. I mean, who doesn't want to see a dragon coming in for 20? 
So we block the CNC out, the cards we have left. And then <laughs> Mirror Guy is the player you want to usually put the pull the traverse trigger on because it's coming in for so much uh, damage and really like pushes the opponent to the point of where he has to block. And now we do exactly that. So we put in total six counters on that, which uh, just gets translated to 20 damage. Oh, and then <laughs> I might not be a Riptide Pro. There is this uh, trap called the Buzzsaw Trap and well, it reads that when this defends an attack with um, attack greater than its base, the attack can't gain attack this turn. Uh, which basically means that Mirror Guys come in for zero because it's sort of gaining 20. Also, there's a second trip. So now also we need to make sure that uh, Mirror Guy doesn't die. At this point, we only have one ward and both of those traps trigger. So they deal two damage and we need a second ward, which would just be our handpiece. Um, honestly, at this point, you should, first of all, let the first trap resolve. And then uh, only when the second one is coming up, you should pull the trigger on the instant here. That way you can give Riptide the chance to uh, review more information. Okay, now Dragon for 22. Just pray. Pray. No more traps. No more traps. Never mind. Okay, so... Classic overcommit. Um, that's not how you do it. That is not how you do it. Um, now the game is actually getting really close. We are like at half deck size. We have quite a few of our power cards um, in the graveyard. And our headpiece is gone as well. But that's okay. Uh, stuff like that happens. It's important to um, hang on and uh, see what you got left to work with. And what I have got left to work with is um, Chi. So we're going in with the Spectral Shield. Another trap. Spectral Shield will be gone. Uh, turn will be over. So yeah, at this point, we should we should try to build up a board again. Really have that backup for all those traps that so that at one point we can actually attack and uh, not let the auras die. Okay, and the instant the sacred art we draw drew is actually really huge. It will make, I think, two shields in total. And with the chi, it um, creates a third one. So that's basically three traps we can cover up. Um, that might just really be important to finish this game. So I'm going to pitch that away for now. So I can make sure it will come up again with all our power cards. And then I think this is all our last Restless Coalescence as well. Should, so in theory, that should also go under the deck. Um, Riptide doesn't really threaten us tempo-wise, so we can really um, take our time, make a, a nice pitch stick happen. Uh, at this point, that that play might be a little greedy. So in retrospect, ideally I pitched the, the cat here. Okay, now well, there's also some quite some spectra left in our deck, which can also help us finish this game out. And also we have quite a few Titmos. Um, as long as we can keep our board alive, and as you've seen, Riptide doesn't threaten too much um, damage, so we can really um, make sure that Phantom Titan sticks around and soaks up all those counters, and then this will also get uh, to be a damage source for us. Very nice. We can um, push more damage, so ideally get a few more of his cards here. If he's playing a trap here, we will just let the cat die, I think. <coughs> Without counters, it's not really worth anything to us. And I do want to play out the size spending this turn. Yep. Mm, another one. Now the question is basically between Waxing Spectre and Tidemore. Or, mm, yeah, I mean, just letting the inertia resolve and put the the haste bending under isn't bad either because as, as i said riptide won't be threatening us tempo wise we can play that haste bending out at a different point okay dread boar coming in with six only inertia on it um i think we can take that though our hand doesn't amount to too much um the other play could be block with metamorph play haste bending preserve tradition put the mirror guy back under the deck 
Oh, we actually got bored. Okay, so we can actually ask no that mirror guy if we wanted to. So we do exactly that. Um, I think CNC is just the best pick to put under your deck against uh, under your under your deck against Riptide because he has all those directs, right? Um, it's really hard to deal uh, to deal with the the CNC for a Riptide player. Uh, for us, normally CNC isn't too big a deal at this point. We do have one of our directs though. Of course, we invest two of our auras here. Not, it's not not a big deal though. Um, all those counters go onto the tide more. We create more spectral shields. We all of a sudden are at a point um, where we do have quite a bit of board now, and we have the mirror guy in Arsenal, I think. So at some point, we can just decide to pull the trigger on this and actually attack for a reasonable amount and with an aura that we can protect this time. Um, that's why I'm actually also passing with the direct in, in hand. And I'm fine to IP myself there. Because I can only repeat, at this point it's not about tempo, it's actually about deck value and getting the most out of your cards. can easily block that. And we'll just repeat the process here. Actually, in retrospect, <laughs> once again, it might just be smarter to not attack at all. Uh, here and wait for... For that mirror guy trigger taking here is a bit greedy because if he plays traps we're getting rid of rid of some spectral shields on the other hand we can now actually push some damage and i think he doesn't have any um hoppers left so we like worst case scenario would have been trading all three spectral shields here and still pushing damage okay we still have two mirror guys left in deck that's very nice I think this hand becomes just again blocking, putting out those shimmers, waiting for a chi. <laughs> Once again, we unfortunately can't play that D react out of hand right now because of the dread ball, his bow. We can play it into the Easter egg though. I mean, for five. As of now, we're not susceptible to getting Codex of Frailty because we do have that arsenal. But, okay, there's another. Now there's the Merkmar coming in. Well, that's unlucky. Uh, he does. The Riptide does run one Merk Merkmar after all. Um, so the Spectre Shields are gone. We are. Um. Well, we need another board to protect the mirror guy, but that's fine. We've got him down to eight. <laughs> we still have 70 cards left. Nothing to worry about. Also, there's the sacred art coming up that, as I've said before, makes um, three spectral shields on command. So that can be the the backup for, for mirror guy. This at this point is just damage. And since we are not like very good on cards, but good on health, this is just a... An attack that we could take, especially because the on it really doesn't matter. He already has an arsenal, and Murky Waters uh, only uh, puts traps, um, shuffles back traps if he has space in his arsenal as well, so it's irrelevant. And then I've decided to not actually attack with the Spectre Shield here, because once again, um, if he had a trap that would kind of... <laughs> defeat the purpose of us building a board and it seems like he's quite loaded on traps here he had to use his um, chest to sink his arsenal away and then he also pitched into his bow to get rid of the the trap in his hand and we can once again keep an keep a d-react to make sure our bot stays alive and well not against the the, <laughs> the bow and arrow though hmm I mean, for five. Yeah, so okay. Maybe we can't <laughs> keep the board alive. Maybe I lied. But uh, that's fine because Sacred Art will make us a board. Okay, and now it's it's time to pull the trigger. Mirror Guy with the G. And 
I make a crucial mistake here, I must say. Um, it's my, as I said, first time as Enigma against um, Riptide. I was still figure, figuring things out, but um, we learned together. So, since Sacred Art is an instant, and in the reaction step, all reactions also work as instants. Um, whenever Riptide will play a trap, the plus one, or no, rather the one damage, gets put onto the stack. And as long as we have a spectral shield to cover that up, it's all good. But when he puts the second trap onto the stack, um, that would be the one that kills Mirror Guy. So we are then forced to make another spectral shield, which means play the sacred art out. If he then has a third trap though, that get, gets put in front of the sacred art onto the chain, dealing a damage that would kill the Mirror Guy. Which in turn leaves us uh, with no Mirror Guy and no big attack to kill him. So the correct play would just have been to play with open information here, play the sacred art before I attack with Mirror Guy, get three Spectre Shields out, and then just be covered against four directs. Um, as I said, first game against the the big green man did not have this um, on my mind. Even like pulling the trigger. Oh, actually, I think collapsing trap does something. That forced me to play Sacred Art even earlier, or maybe I just panicked at this point. Any, in any case, like that was a misplay on my part, and now we, he had the third trap anyway. We are getting um, rid of, oh, and the fourth one, okay. So yeah, playing the Sacred Art was like the mandatory play that I didn't go for. Still a strong card though. Now we have three more weapons in our on our board. And, well, the Riptide can't really threaten us with just one hand, uh, one card in hand. So we can now come in with all those attacks. We have four singular wards that can also keep us from getting trapped. And then we can also finish this turn up with a Command and Conquer. And, well, Riptide could have um, still a few traps left here. If not, he's getting low. And we'll be, we will get all these cheese now, so every turn we can at least produce one more Spectral Shield with Counter. And... Okay, it's really blocking intensely here. So I'll just keep pushing some damage. Let's see what he does here. Okay, now the CNC becomes very huge. Um, let's see, maybe he doesn't even have a normal block. And we'll... Oh, yep. He had a direct in hand. And that just meant... No blocking for him. Okay, he could have gone for the helmet block there, then lost his arsenal. But then uh, next next turn we're coming in with like four, maybe five Spectre Shields again. And I think at this point we're just ripping too many cards from him. Um, wow, that that was a learning experience. Um, average value per turn 6.5, so that's not great. But that's actually, for a matchup like this, totally fine. Um, Enigma can play this controlled style and just outvalue the the opponent on a deck basis really really enjoyable experience for me though the deck is hella fun um just check out the deck link in the description if there are any questions please let me know and yeah i'll see you at the next video